All right, today we're talking all about Shotzi's favorite Mercado play. This is a lurk towards the B site on our offenses while the rest of our team was going towards the A site. He would try and get a really sneaky pick on the flank, and it was just a really fun uh, play that we would like to do on our Mercado offenses. So let's get right into it. So I'll show you a bunch of examples of us doing it in real matches against pro teams. Uh, and it was really common for us to do this. I would say probably once a map, uh, you could expect Shotzi to hit this type of flank. And this play by him started all the way back, I believe in January. I was going through all the VODs trying to figure out when was the first match we actually used this play in. And it was one of our matches in our major two qualifiers. So that's where it originated. And we continued to use it basically throughout the entire year uh, up until I want to say major five. I'm not sure if we used it at champs. We may have used it at champs. But the big thing to note was that the defense would never really know when we were going to be doing this play. So they would always have to be on their toes for it. Plus the fact that, you know, Ant is a really good playmaker when he's by himself like that. So even if they did uh, kind of play towards there, he could still find some gaps and direct their attention away while our guys uh, would go and try and work towards the A site. So I'll draw this out completely for you guys just so you get a, a really good sense of what was going on uh, throughout the play. So as you can see here, Ant, Shotzi, the only guy towards this B site. What he's trying to do here is make sure that he pushes through this B site uh, as like a lurker. So a lurker, if you never played like CS or Val, is someone who plays on the off site, trying to get kills on anyone that might be rotating towards where the direct attention of the rest of the team is uh, towards this A site. So what he's trying to do is get anyone that might be rotating off or really just playing off of the distraction from the rest of his teammates and making sure that he can try and get a kill, really seeing if he can get a free kill on anyone that might have their back turns toward them or attract attention towards himself and try and open up some possibilities for the rest of his team uh, while he is creating that distraction on the other site. So once he gets towards the B site here, he has a few different options on what he can do. So first option is just child this lane, this mid lane. So sometimes enemies would be playing towards this L spot, uh, looking to see if anyone might be pushing towards B site. So in, in this case, uh, a one-on-one -on -one gunfight isn't really favored towards him, uh, but what he can do is use his movement here and try and get towards dark instead, or even fully flank around uh, towards CT. This was a little bit of a more questionable play just because of how long it would take for him to actually wrap around all the way. Uh, so most of the time he would be taking uh, this dark route when he was trying to flank like this. So you'll see LAG in this play, and this was more towards the beginning where teams weren't really catching on to what he was doing. Uh, what he's going to do uh, towards B side here is a lot of times they would play quickly towards this B side because it was not favored and then instantly try and go towards this mid cut and play for anyone on the opposing team uh, and that might be trying to hit through mid this way. So what they were trying to do was just cover their bases real quick towards that B site, make sure no one's going there and then instantly go towards mid uh, to help out anyone that might be cutting towards mid to the A site on the offense and really helping out their team towards that A site, which was more favored. So with teams playing like this, this was kind of free play for Ant where he can try and catch this person that might be rotating early off guard, get a free kill on this guy, and then eventually help out his teammate with the rest of the players uh, on the enemy team uh, playing towards the A site. That's what a lot of teams would do, you know, where they would stack the A site because it was so offensively favored. And that was a big thing for us in this strat where we would just want to stay alive at least uh, in this green area to try and let Ant make a play. You know, if he does see someone that might be playing towards this L side, uh, he has to direct their attention away so that these guys towards the A site could start making some plays and start planning towards that A bomb. So I'll play out this round for you guys. As you see, number four, he's that lone B player. He checks towards this B cut real quick and then instantly tries to help out his team towards mid here. So this gives that opening for Ant to try and make a play uh, through the B side. And as you see towards this green side here, we're trying to stay alive just inside green, make sure that we're letting Ant make the play first, and then we can capitalize off of it if it's successful. So I'll play this round out for you guys. Actually, we do get two kills toward this green side. So this isn't the best example because we do get the kills green side and he doesn't really open it up for us anyway. Uh, but he does get the final kill towards mid here because uh, we know last guy is this mid tunnel and he can flank them pretty easily. Uh, so we'll get into other examples and it'll give you a little bit of a better uh, idea of what was going on. As you'll see in this example, again, number two, Shotzi here, he's playing London in this case. And this London player is actually going to take a little bit more time playing towards this B site compared to that LAG player that we saw before, but he's still going to give it up once the action goes down towards this A site. So as you see, London here is doing a one, two, one strat where they send two guys toward this mid alley. Unfortunately for them though, we have a sniper watching this complete lane. Uh, so they're gonna back off onto that. And because of this, what we can do is start taking control towards this green side and taking control of that a site and while they think we have this a site locked down with three players and probably getting a plan on in 
Uh, what they don't know is Ant is this lurker towards this B side, and he's going to take a route uh, through the B side and try and pick off anyone that might be caught off guard from trying to rotate themselves towards that A site because they know that A is that favorable site and was that favorable site for us specifically. And if we had a full three man setup towards there, this guy towards the B site would have to go and rotate uh, towards the A site to actually help out for them to have any chance of winning this round. So what happens here, these guys mid get back down from the sniper. Number eight is still playing this B cross. And as you can see here, he's eventually going to give it up just because of the action that is going towards this A site. Look at these deaths happen and him instantly go towards uh, helping out that A site and turning around. So as you see, the kills go down here. He instantly turns towards that. And this creates a huge opening for Shotzi to get some kills. And he gets two with their backs turned toward him. And then he's able to get the third by wrapping around Dark and killing him towards the L. So I'll play it out for you guys. He gets this first kill, gets the second, and then wraps toward dark to get this final kill, a different angle on the guy L, gets the kill for us and we win the round. So as you can see from that, because of the action that was going down towards the A site, it created a big distraction for the enemy team. They thought that they needed to rotate to help out towards the A site and help out their teammates. But what they didn't know was that we had one person uh, that was playing lurking towards this B site and getting those free kills on anyone that was trying to help out uh, that was late towards that A site. So this is the same exact game. That was round six. This is round 10, uh, just two offenses later, probably when he had dead silence again, he's gonna make this play again and do the same type of thing. And on the London side here, they're actually gonna make a good play by sending four people towards A side, but one of these guys is gonna go towards L and actually be able to hold this angle. Unfortunately for him though, he's going to give it up just at the wrong time once again. And as you can see on our side here, we already have good positioning towards that A site. You know, and often specifically on Mercado, you're really able to get early positioning towards that A site so early. That's why it was so favored. So, you know, a lot of times you would see offenses winning the rounds because they had such a big advantage on getting towards uh, that A site and actually being able to stunt the enemy with nades towards here or stuns towards here so that they wouldn't be able to get towards green uh, as quick as the offense. So that's how it was really offensively sided. And now we have good positioning towards green and now we can wait for Ant to make a play or at least draw some attention away uh, from the rest of our guys towards the A site. So you see number eight go L here. Actually, I don't even think he looks for the gunfight. He's just trying to take a different angle onto the A site by going mid instead and the kills do go down. So actually for London, I gave him a little bit too much credit. I thought they were playing for this route specifically and just gave it up at the wrong time. I think they just end up going towards uh, this tunnel to take a different angle and actually don't even look for Ant uh, making the same exact play again towards this mid cut. And as you see, it's a 3-2 and has a perfect flank on this guy mid tunnels. He gets that kill and now it's a 3v1 and we have an easy round win uh, once we plant the bomb. So in this round versus LAG, you're really gonna see how badly this could be abused if they didn't send anyone towards this B site, which is really not that common because of offense being so favored in this matchup and because they were able to get such early positioning towards that A site, that's why A was so favored. But if you were able to catch anyone lacking by not sending anyone towards that B site, then this play could really help you get a free kill uh, towards Towards the flank. So for this round, 3v3 on site, similar to what we were seeing before, but this number seven lone guy is gonna take a different angle and try and look towards uh, the alley, try and take a different angle onto that A site. But this is going to give the wide open opportunity for Ant to make this full on flank through dark here and try and get some free kills on anyone that might be playing uh, either mid or towards this head cut. So uh, those were going to be free kills for him if they weren't able to pick him up. You know, him making the play once he had that dead silence, if you didn't have anyone watching this crossover here or playing a tight corner towards this B site, uh, he was going to make some plays on you. So you see 3v3 on site. We have the mid guy playing here. Shasi's able to get the free opening to get kills hedge cut. And this is exactly why this play was drawn up uh, so that he can make plays like this. He sees the opening, creeps up, gets the two kills, and then gets the third one on the guy mid. Now, once again, same exact game, just two rounds later on. But what do you know? LAG is going to adjust here. They're going to send number five to watch this cross to make sure that no one is making a play towards this B site lurking like they did in that previous round. But Shotzi, the playmaker as he is, knows his options. He has a lot of options with this play on what he can do. And what he's going to do here is first dive across, see if anyone's watching that cross. And what he can do here is have that option to either go push through their base, either through dark or through CT. Or what he can do is just jump back 
wrap back and start helping out his team through mid. And what he's going to choose to do is help out his team through mid, make this guy worried about him on the flank so that he can try and be useless for at least a few moments while his team is trying to set up towards that A site. So as you see, he dives, number five sees him, he doubles back, goes back towards mid to help him out. As you can see, number five is still watching this cross, really directing that attention away from the rest of these gunfights going down. And now we're gonna have that fourth guy onto the site so we can try and win some trade battles and then get that bomb down. So unfortunately for us, number three did die right before Ant was trying to make this play, but we do trade him out, killing number seven here. But unfortunately we do end up losing the trade battle because uh, we lost the green battle with number three dying. And then number eight here is able to kill Ant for free uh, because they had that green control. Since we were contesting that from the back alley, we didn't really have control for Ant to actually make the play. Uh, so he does make the play. Unfortunately for our team though, they are able to read him out because they have a little bit better positioning uh, with that green control. The trades end up going down and we end up losing this round. Uh, so a really bad round to actually lose. Unfortunately, we didn't get that initial green control, which we should have with that advantage on offense. Uh, but sometimes that's how it goes. You just lose the gunfight. Uh, and we try to salvage it with the play that Ant was making. Unfortunately, we don't. So just sometimes that does happen. This play comes from the major four uh, tournament versus phase. Uh, so unfortunately for us on the offense, we start losing these trade battles early here, which makes Ant want to make a play uh, to try and salvage it because he knows that there are fewer people towards A. So once we get first blooded like that, there's even fewer people with only two guys and there could be four towards that A site. So he wants to make a quick play to try and equalize it as fast as possible. Unfortunately for him though, this is where some VOD comes in. You see a lot of teams preparing, watching VOD, seeing tendencies of other teams, and Simp plays this really tight corner over here, expecting some sort of play by Ant. Unfortunately for Ant, he doesn't have the time to check all of his corners because the action is going towards A. As you can see, two guys on our team have already died, and Simp's able to get this free kill onto Ant. Uh, so that's where some tendencies going towards the end of the year start to actually hurt you just a little bit because teams are preparing for it. They know your tendencies. Uh, they know what you like to do. So this is where you yourself have to switch it up just a little bit. Unfortunately, in this situation specifically, uh, the action was going down towards A, so we were kind of on the back foot anyways. But this was a direct counter to what Ant was doing in the first place. So you see how teams are trying to counter uh, tendencies specifically with this play. Okay, so the last one I'll show you guys, this is versus Vegas. Uh, this is Clay right here. He's actually gonna push up all the way up towards the garage here and keep looking for anyone that might be pushing uh, towards this B site. And then he's gonna double back uh, once kills go down. So once again, Shotzi's working that timing, trying to get in their mind and expect when they're gonna rotate off that site. And he's gonna find the perfect moment right here. So as you see, Clay starts moving up right here. And this is the exact moment right here because Clay is already starting to turn around and Ant sees him right here while he's turning around, he can now call to his team to start wrapping towards his B site because he knows that Clay is gonna start rotating off of this and he can get a free kill onto this B site and they can start rotating towards there, get that positioning, get that bomb down and win the round. So Clay fully turns his back and is stalking him now on the B site. We actually do get a kill towards that A site, which is even perfect for our wrap now because we know that their attention is towards this A site still and will be for just a little bit because because we get that first blood. Uh, but Ant is stalking Clay here. He's gonna get this free kill on Clay trying to rotate because they got first blooded towards that A site. And now it's a free B site. And now he can start taking some spades. That's a big thing for lurkers. If you do get a kill on one of those rotators, you can start taking more spades and get that distraction going for that enemy team because they're gonna be starting to look for you now uh, because they don't know exactly where you're at. They know that you're in their base, but they don't know exactly where. So they're gonna have to take a lot of time to actually clear you out. And look at the space that he's able to clear. There's so many options for him right now. He can play a credit towards his back alley, kill anyone that might be rotating there. He can go towards dark, play a corner there. He can even just play on this rooftop, which I believe he ends up doing and playing angles where they wouldn't expect him on top of this rooftop. And because it's a 4v2, it's just an instant wrap from us. And you see here, he takes the safe option going to this rooftop so he can cut off this entire lane uh, make sure that anyone who's rotating through CT or through dark has to go through him first. And now we can start working our way towards bomb here and we can have the support of number five watching this full cross. Uh, it should be easy round win. And that's exactly what happens. Number one isn't able to get the kill. We get the bomb down and then it's a free win uh, for our team. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown on the Shotzi Lurk play that we had on Mercado. Uh, let me know of any other plays or things that you'd like me to break down and I will see you guys in the next one.